Alright guys, so VBAD here with another VPlays. This is one of my earlier flights in the A7M. Uh, I will hit you guys up uh, live as I finish the battle, but I re record battles kind of ahead of time. I don't narrate all of them, so this is going to be a post-battle narration. So, yeah, what is this plane? This is the Tier 7 Japanese plane coming down the Zero Line. Never thought I'd actually ever buy this plane, the A7M. The nice thing about the A7M is it actually has a complement of four 20mm cannons, two mounted in each wing, but it still has the same maneuverability of all of its predecessors. And it steadily gets an increase in altitude and airspeed, but that's just really keeping it on par with all the other aircraft that are also getting enhancements as they go up in tier. So what you really get is a zero with 420s, and that's what you can do with a zero with 420s that can range out over 2,000 feet. We're able to absolutely decimate aircraft and do the type of flying I typically don't do on this channel. I'm not much of a turn and burn player. Uh, it just doesn't interest me as much as like altitude fighters or heavies or even ground attackers because I feel like it takes a little bit more to be able to master those traits while this is just heavy turning and maneuvering but it does take a degree of control to not over climb over stretch or to know when to leave the zone because unlike my heavy where i can easily double back to where the threat is in this aircraft i have to plan ahead and deal with long turn times the enemy does have a specialized IL-8, and that is a major concern for me because he can just run around and flip zones with relative impunity, and I really don't want to be stuck in his tail gunner because he has a very robust tail gunner, and this is actually going to be the most heavily armored ground attacker at tier 7. You can see we can easily handle any of the light fighters that come into the zone. Even a Spitfire is not going to be much of a challenge for this aircraft, unless of course it's specialized. I'm not letting any of these aircraft go ignored because I'm still relatively fragile, but with these 20s it allows me to be able to get in some good passing blows at range, minimizing my time inside of the tail gunner. Here we're taking a little bit of the hits, but I'm willing to focus him down, and we manage to take out the airframe. We do have a 109TL over here, which is going to be a very high speed multi roll, more of a heavy in a multi rolls body. And this thing is able to get some decent range on me. I am taking some pot shots at him as he tries to get away. And he goes for a bit of a climb, so he's sacrificing some of his airspeed. I do a bit of a fake out by turning right, but then. He, just as he thinks it's clear and decides to come back into the center, I can get guns on him and knock him out. We've just picked up the Akamatsu medal, and we're doing pretty good on our fighter grade marks right now. Also, it's nice that this is actually an air base instead of a traditional air field, which means that we are going to be able to recharge some of our hit points. There's an I-250 up here, seems like a good opportunity. Decent altitude on this airframe, again, it's just holding steady for the incremental gains that all the aircraft get at this tier. There is a Ki-84, a definite threat on the battlefield, but again, we are the masters of the turn fight, and we just picked up Grade 2 as well as Guardian. We also have an ally here, I believe he was in a P-51, I'll have to double check again if I can see him. And we're going after this Faka Wolf 190A8. Just a few sporadic shots here, and we just got Flying Guardian Badge. The IL-8 is back again. Oh, there he goes. I can't even see him. And I am going to try and deviate, come back on him, and... Yep, it is a P-51D, but he is right in the blast radius of the bomb of our IL-8 here, and he really paid for it. Now, I really can't afford to let this guy go around un attacked uh he i was scared he was going to drop another bomb i'm a little bit gun shy at this point but we managed to take him out uh usually i don't advocate getting the repair facility because if he was able to flip this zone we'd have to wait you would have to wait for this zone to completely turn over from the lock position in order to get the repair site back so as an attacker usually i don't attack that facility unless I know we're having a tough time, and a good way to attrit away a lot of the light fighter defenders, such as my airframe, 
is you take out that repair facility and it reduces my ability to maintain the fight because eventually I'm going to be low on hit point. Now, that was arguably a bad move. I went up way above my altitude regime. You saw us getting really low on airspeed, but it seemed to handle it okay. But if any enemy aircraft was near us, they could have made easy work of me. I was paying very careful attention to the minimap to ensure that I wasn't putting myself in a dangerous position. We're going to start heading over to this garrison because there doesn't seem to be much coming into the zone except for two aircraft, and I figure I can make my way back. As you can see here, the gap between the two circles is relatively small. I prefer to stay at a lower altitude and climb up to the enemy aircraft in this fighter because with the range of the guns and the decent ability to climb in this airframe or at least hold its control at low airspeed allows me to be able to catch people by surprise. We just, just picked up grade one and if we can kill one other aircraft we'll be able to secure the zone. There's a light fighter going for a head-on here. If I can just kill one more aircraft, we should be able to pick this up and get air supremacy. We have knocked out the engine on that enemy light fighter. I'm going to go in for the kill here. Picked up the zone, got flying paladin badge, but there is an aircraft vector to my position. It is a J7W1. That is going to be the tier 8 coming off of the zero line. And a lot of people may be thinking, well, he's a tier higher and he's of the same line, so he's better, right? Well, he's a multi-role. He doesn't quite have the turn capability that we do, and we're going to be able to make short work of him. Managed to pick up Winged Legend, and now we're going to head back to the center to continue our work. Kind of glad we didn't pick up Air Supremacy here because it gives us a little bit more time on the battlefield. There is that Key 84. He's a more dangerous threat, and he's closer. Should be able to kill him fairly quickly based on his low amount of hit points he has available, and we got some help from our P-51. The I-250 has a 37mm hub gun I definitely don't want to be taking a hit from. Again, fragile airframe, and we managed to just pick up Ace. Doesn't often happen that I'm recording when I'm able to get an Ace. And again, this aircraft isn't even fully upgraded at this point, I don't believe anyways, so we'll see when we get to the end game. Um, vectoring in on the IL-8 again, it is Squall Line. I definitely don't want to be subject to a bomb blast here, but able to attack him from a pretty decent range managing our approach i'm still wary of bomb drops from that aircraft so i'm just trying to be as evasive as possible i'm not sure if that first attack he did where he killed our p-51d was intentional or if it was accidental again hitting him at range lighting him on fire very high fire potential with this gun with these guns for whatever reason a lucky target with the xf5u being at low health already and now he's gone as well. And remember that since this is Squall Line, all of these aircraft are gone for good and we're not going to have to deal with them again. We do have that J7W1 again. He does have four 30mm cannons, so I don't want to ignore him. But also, I'm not too worried about him. He's not as fast as a Focke Wolf 190 is, so we're going to go for the 190. And he's turning away. We'll get some good hits. Do you think we can kill him before the end of the battle? Not quite. All right, so that was a really good result and fairly unexpected. 19,000 personal points, an absolute myriad of different medals to be able to pick up here. I honestly say I've never been a very big fan of turn fighters. I just feel like uh, they're very limited. The times where I've needed to get up to altitude or I've needed to be able to counter a player in a bomber or a heavy and... I was stuck in a light fighter that either couldn't keep pace or it just couldn't get to the altitudes it needed to be at. Really made me push my aircraft where it shouldn't be and then I obviously was punished for it. But as time has gone on and I've flown more against these vehicles or these light turn fighters, I'd like to think that I've started to figure out how to actually play them, where their strengths lie, where they cost me troubles in my big heavies and fast aircraft. And knowing which zones to go to and planning ahead. Planning ahead is key with these turn fighters. It takes a little bit more forethought than you would initially think because it's mostly just a yank and bank aircraft, right? But there's more to it than that because if you don't plan to go to the right zone early on, you're just never going to get to the next spot early enough. And knowing when to leave is also very important as well. Like when we dipped out of the main zone and went over to that garrison, but. You know, it's not for everybody. Uh, I think it's a good place to start as you just focus on flying your plane in your comfort zone. 
And then you steadily start to branch out as you learn more about other airframes and different play styles. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. And if you've been playing Zeros, uh, maybe you can look forward to what the A7M has to offer.